And tonight we have, um, we're pleased to have Rusty Banks here with First Baptist Church to do our invocation. Mayor, let me just say thank you for the opportunity to be able to come here and, and do this. It means a lot to us, and I know it means a lot to our community. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for us. We're thankful, Lord, for the redeeming power that he's given us, Lord. Um, I pray, God, that you be with the leaders of our community. Thankful, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to recognize um, who you are and what you have done for us. And I just pray, God, for these leaders. I pray, God, for the decisions that they make. I pray, God, that they will be decisions, Lord, that are honoring uh, to you. Let us uh, honor you with our speech and our actions. Thank you for this beautiful rain that you've given us. And just ask you, Lord, to be with us as we travel home. Be with our families as we're away. In Jesus' name, amen. for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, City Clerk, if you'll do our roll call, please. Mr. Abraham? Mr. Galt? Present. Mr. Rhodes? Here. Mr. Wilson? Present. Mayor Kaler? Present. I move that the notice of call meeting and the amended notice of call meeting for Tuesday, July 30th, 2013 be received and filed. Second. Okay. City Clerk. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Commissioner Galt, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled An Ordinance of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, approving the AIA Design Bill Construction Agreement as amended and supplemented among the City of Paducah, Kentucky, the County of McCracken, Kentucky, and A and K Construction Inc. with respect to a public project authorizing the execution of the AIA Design Bill Construction Agreement and all other documents related thereto. This ordinance is summarized as follows. This ordinance authorizes the City of Paducah, Kentucky, the City, to approve an AIA Design Bill Construction agreement as amended and supplemented along with the city of Paducah, Kentucky, the county of McCracken, Kentucky, and A and K Construction, Inc., the agreement for further furtherance of the construction and installation of a customer care center approved under the provisions of ordinance number 2012-11-7986 adopted on November 13, 2012, and municipal order number 1716 adopted March 26, 2013. Seconded. Okay, any discussion? All right. City Clerk? Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaler? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes, please. Uh, oh. Okay. <clears throat> I move that the board go into a closed session for discussion of matters pertaining to the following topics. A specific proposal by a business entity where public discussion of the subject matter would jeopardize the location, retention, expansion, or upgrading of a business entity as permitted by KRS 61.8101 little g. Second. All right. City Clerk. Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaler? Aye. And we will be coming back In open after this session. in open session. bid and and figure out the transportation home to paducah well you know maybe the local bid is a little higher than the state bid but by the time you get the, the transportation figured out the local bid may be the lower bid well i think it's important that we be good stewards of the taxpayers money that we are fair mm -hmm. and allow all local businesses to bid on projects i don't think we should just select some i think we should let them all be able to do that yep. and i think it's important that we follow what is legally correct when you're dealing with this kind of a government entity there are different regulations in play than from private business so i just think we have to do take all of that into consideration and you know i don't think there's a single person on this board that doesn't want to support local business absolutely absolutely not. and any kind of perception out there that 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 wasn't the case is wrong we all want that that's right i, I think it's every just how do we do it 
And I think I, I think our procurement code serves us well. It, it is fairly prescriptive, fairly detailed, and uh, I think in this particular instance, a conscious decision was made uh, at the staff level to buy off the state contract without uh, providing the opportunity for local vendors to participate. I think revisiting that decision is the appropriate level of review here, and uh, certainly uh, we could uh, proceed in a, a different fashion as a matter of uh, uh, routine going forward in that we would uh, conduct a local solicitation, have the state bid out there as a benchmark, if you will, or as a comparison uh, should there be a wide gap or a gap that constitutes a uh, uh, I think a level that uh, the taxpayers uh, overall may be better served by uh, purchasing elsewhere and, and make that judgment and decision as we go. Now that's the way it's commonly handled from city to city. Um, I think our, our ordinance uh, allows us to do that because it's essentially been an administrative decision uh, to conduct it the way we conducted it this year. Well, there's a there's a couple of things um, since the uh, uh, the article was written and uh, the the piece was shown on uh, on TV and a question that uh, the questions that I that I got after that was a perception that we're not allowing or our local vendors are not are, are somehow being shut out of the process. Now, when you talk about opportunities, allowing our local folks to have the opportunity to participate, well, define opportunity because we have some lender, uh, some dealers here or uh, um, uh, vendors here that participate in that in that process, and then we have some that choose not to. So at that point. Uh, just on that right there, then that's if you choose not to to participate in uh, the procurement uh, situation that we have going on right now, then I mean, why is that? You just choose not to. Uh, you talking about the statewide bidding or local? To be a state vendor. I, to be, we have some. About to be a state vendor. Have, yes, we have some we that have, have been awarded the state. Well, contract. see, but I, for somehow that didn't come across, and the emails that I got. Uh, had had the tone of you know why are you guys going outside the city to get police cars why haven't why don't you guys give our local uh, uh, dealers a, a chance to bid on that well that's when that's what I'm coming back to the opportunity to participate to possibly get that was chose by the powers that be decided no I don't want to do that I don't want to get into that so so here's the thing how much money uh, 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 from, I don't know, the last three to five years, have our local, because you're right, everybody up here wants our local folks to be able to participate in the process. Okay, how much money uh, over the last three to five years, since we're talking about this particular this particular issue, have our local dealerships or, or uh, uh, folks Receive from doing business with the city. I mean, what's what's the number on that? Because see, I think those types, that type of of information wasn't put out there. And the the conversations that I had were people like, well, why y'all just trying to shut uh, shut our local guys out? I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's that's not th that's not it at all. But that wasn't brought across in the in the uh, in the interview. That wasn't brought across in the in the newspaper, so what is what is that number? And the only reason I'm saying that is to show that that's not what we're about at all. That that's absolutely not what we're about at all. Um, there was also the perception that uh, um, well we're trying to uh, there's some kind of lack of transparency. That's not true. We have a public information officer that will put put all of our. What do you want to know? What do you want to know about your tax dollars and where it's going? It's right there. It's wide open. So I just want folks to understand that uh, as a commission, and I'm pretty sure everybody up here wants our local folks to be as involved as they want to be. You are right. Yes, we do. So, so just 
bid. I mean, a local dealer may or may not choose to bid in the state just because he says, look, I don't want that level of business, but I sure would like to be able to vote or to bid in the local area. I mean, many times as a Dodge or Ford dealer, I chose, I said, look, I don't have any desire to sell a bazillion cars all over the state. I just don't want the exposure. I want the paperwork. I don't want the headache. But I darn sure want to sell one in my town or in my area. But I That's the, and that was your choice. Right. Well, I, I don't want folks to, to, to assume or, or have a perception that uh, there's no choice. You have a choice. You decide what you want to do but as a I, business owner. But it's, but it's two different choices. I may elect not to bid on state business for the entire state, but I can still bid. I would like to be asked to bid on my local business here within the county. And that's two real different issues. That's two different, two different things. In other words, I may be happy to sell three cars to the city of Paducah, but I didn't want to be, I didn't want the exposure or, or go through the paperwork of selling 3,000 cars. Have you looked at this? Well, it just was late from my desk. Anyway. I, mean, I mean, well, look at the totals. Look at the gray area. Okay. All of these are locals. Yeah. You'd be hard pressed to convince someone on the street that uh, we're not giving these guys aren't given the opportunity to participate. Richard, all I'm, all I was saying last week was that, and I understand why, Mr. Murphy. It's you know there is an expense, there is a time issue, and it's easier just to take the state bid. I get that, but unless the city takes the the action that says okay on whether it's police cars or whatever it may be, we will advertise that in the local paper. Then the local leader does not get a chance to sell those cars. Let me well, make a suggestion, if I would. I'm prepared going forward to um, direct that uh, purchases for vehicles be advertised locally. That will satisfy the um, mm -hmm. question of the opportunity for participation locally in local purchases. But why would we stop with just vehicles? Why wouldn't we go ahead and look at other things that could be purchased locally as well? Well, I'm certainly not suggesting that we uh, aren't doing that. Uh, I'm trying to isolate the um, discussion to this issue. I think we try to we do try to purchase locally. We do. Um, but in this particular case, this year, it was a conscious decision to award on state bid without the local bid being taken. We but you're saying other things we do buy locally, and we can say that to our taxpayers, yeah, that we when we can lot. spend money locally, we do. Our business. It's in our ordinance. Yeah. I, I don't have numbers. I certainly don't have item by well, item details on that, but I, I can assure you that that's, that's what we endeavor to do when we can. I, I think it should be. Now that it's been brought out there and we know about it, I mean, uh, absolutely. We wouldn't want to well, just stop with the vehicles. Well, I think, I think the, the, uh, the campaign that was started uh, years ago, a few years ago, uh, through the chamber, uh, talking about buying local whenever possible, you know, do that. And I don't think anyone in the city ha has a problem with that. It was a buy local camp campaign created by a local firm right? Well, as well. Well, that being said, I would hope that, that these numbers here, you know, this is, this is taxpayers' money, and the story was, uh, was, was publicly talked about uh, without any particulars on how much money our local folks uh, have made uh, through the taxpayers, through what we're doing, and I would hope that Adam, you got a, you, you get a copy of this and look at that, because that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Please do, because that wasn't mentioned last time, right? And that was, and that's important, just so everybody's clear that we're not we're not shutting our, our local folks out. Business folks makes decision; they make decisions to do what they want to do. And no one's in business to lose money, right? But, but we understand that. But last week we, you know, we had a motion that we could buy three cars from, uh, from Crossroads Ford, and that's what sparked that particular comment. 
Okay, but I'm just saying there was more information to be given. Well, I'm just saying it also brought out a bigger, a larger issue then. I don't think we should do it just for automobiles. If we're going to bid, then we need to do it for every, for other well, things as well, Alan. It needs to be local and fair to everyone. It's, it's in the policy. It's in our ordinances about buying local. It's already in the ordinance. Then we right. need to make sure we follow that. It's already there. So all, so all we have to do, city manager, is just advertise in the newspaper. And we're, we're abiding by the buy local. Well, certainly, but bear in mind, advertising the newspaper, I don't believe you can limit responses to local, uh, and Mr. City Attorney. That was going to be my question. It, it's more complicated, I think, than but. It, 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 it boils down to it, it make it sound so simple. Local? But I, I'm sitting here thinking, it, it, just going through this in two or three sentences, it sounds so simple. But I think it's a little more complicated than mm -hmm. and than. Well. We're, then this, we're having this dis peripheral discussion. And in theory, buying local is absolutely what we all want to do. Whenever possible, no questions asked, but the ordinance is already on the book to buy local, essentially. Yeah. But there are other situations that make it and create it a little more complicated. And I hate to lean on either one of the two of you, but I don't know that we're really solving our problem just by saying we want to buy local when always possible. And as Jeff, you just pointed out, when you advertise in the newspaper, you can't. But but, but you and you can't limit it to one. We can't say it all, all for words. I'm let's. Saying. All I'm saying you know, is. I, I hate to open that can of worms, but I. You got to look at all sides better, of the issue. My better judgment tells me to keep a seat, but this uh, <laughs> uh, touches, I guess, my office as much or more than it does anybody's office, based on the nature of what we do for the public um, you're right it's not simple uh, for this uh, by local define local because you do have a lot of county businesses that pay city taxes to participate with they, they pay your uh, city uh, uh, business license tax to hopefully provide business to the city but then when you say buy local, logically, we know what that means. But from a business point of view, they could say, well, I'm within the city. I pay more than my share of taxes. So therefore, I should be given an opportunity or maybe preference over a county business. Okay, now, now it, it, starts, it starts getting tricky for somebody in my position, for example, um, anything less than $2,500, we can go out and purchase to move effectively. Okay, that number used to be $500. And when you needed to get quotes for something that was $505, all of a sudden, the, the I guess the cost of, or, or the speed of services moved at the speed of snail because we were having to satisfy purchasing requirements. We bumped that up to $2,500 because to get a tree removed, let's, let's use a, a tree. You know, you got a dangerous tree out there. Well, to get three quotes on that, you got to go meet three different vendors out there at three separate times. They may or may not show up. Okay, you get your quotes, and now you got to schedule it to get it down. All of a sudden, it takes two months to get a tree taken down. It's not efficient. It's not efficient, so we move we move those numbers up to to move more rapidly, to to provide services to the citizens. However, anything that's over twenty thousand dollars must come before this board. Okay, so anything between twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars, we have to take quotes on twenty five hundred to twenty thousand dollars. We take quotes on. Typically, we'll take three quotes. We would like to get three quotes. They would range in the region of who can provide those services. But if you limit that to the boundary or to some percentage, now all of a sudden, what's local? Is it within the city boundary? Because you may only get one quote. And then that person who provides that says, I'm within the boundary and these other guys are in the county or they're in the next county over, but now... Now we get to turn into discretionary and decision makers of which this thing gets all out of whack. 
So that's we're still buying local, but what's defined as local? Rick, all I'm into the this is not Rick. This is just <laughs> all I'm saying is, is that I'm not suggesting we change our method of when you know whether it's a tree or a. Yes, you are. A, yes, you are. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you all are. I'm saying is instead, and I, I seized on cars because that was the motion last week. All I'm saying is it is just put it in the paper. We're going to advertise for this kind of a police car. And whoever in the area who wants to bid will bid. That's all I'm asking. So you're saying that opportunity doesn't exist right now? Well, it didn't. <laughs> because certain, certain dealers decided not to participate in, in what we're doing. Richard, that's no. You're wrong. No, what we were doing is what the state was doing. The state did an advertisement solicitation on a statewide business. Local dealers could decide to participate or not. Yeah. That's and my they might point. or might not have gotten the bid. That's my point. They decided no, not to. Richard. We don't know that they did or didn't. They might have just not and gotten let me, it. Let me, Alan, let me ask this question of you. Let me ask, because I think this is what you're saying. Why don't we just advertise in the paper for a, because it's a Ford, and that's we all know we're talking about a Ford because it was a Ford police car, and that it's item specific. Yeah. So why don't we just advertise in the paper for a Ford? Is that what I'm hearing well, you say? Well, you, I suppose you will have to advertise for a police car. Yeah. It will match these specials. It may be a charger or, or an uh, interceptor. Or a but that's where I think that the miscommunication is coming. All I'm saying is, is I'm, not, I'm not talking about changing the – I'm just saying, look, give the person who said, I wasn't, I'm not interested in bidding on state cars for all over the state. Well, you don't know if he did or didn't. But, but regardless, all I'm saying is, is it for your local dealer to say, on whatever it may be, instead of going to the state and taking the state contract bid, just to advertise it locally. But I believe we should do that for more than just that one I'm just about item. This, I'm just about this one issue that, was came, that came last week. I, I agree with you. But I thought we were talking about this one particular issue. Yeah, but, but we can't just do it for up, one. It can't be confined to just one thing. It's much broader than that. Yes, I realize. And it encompasses so many things that we purchase for I, the I, city. I, and again, I, mean, I think we should be good stewards, follow the law, and fair to everyone. And fair to our local businesses. They should get some preference. Well, that's another that's another level of, of policy. It is. If we're going to do that, yeah. But I think we need to look at that. We get in a certain dollar area, and Rick kind of explained it. We are competitively procuring. We're seeking out multiple prices, and I don't think we purposefully bypass local vendors. At least I'm not aware that we've had a problem with our procurement policy. This is the first time I've heard it. If we have a problem now, do we have a problem with it, or is this associated with this particular bid and Alan's issue? I think it's the latter. No, well, I've, I've heard it before. It. Well, Jeff, yeah. I, it's the first time. It, it may be out there, but it hasn't been brought to my attention. Well, we are, it's the first time I've heard it. we are aware that there is, Bowling Green does have some kind of a, a policy in place that does give prefer, preference to their local businesses. And I just got it this afternoon, so I haven't read and studied it. I did make a call to Bowling Green and was not able to talk to anyone this afternoon. I know our city attorney did. I just think that we should look at all of it. If we're going to buy local, and we should buy local. We I have the order to everyone. Bowling Green right here, and it is only within their city limits. It's, it's very strict, and it makes me question, because I know we've had situations where we only had one service provider within our city limits, and we tried to work a contract with them, and their price, we couldn't negotiate the price. We continued to do that, but the service began to be lacking, and we were locked in there because – because of that, and there are no exceptions in that policy, though, in um, case, are there any, I, I guess we're all I mean, Dave, that's and, their ordinance. And, and 5% local preference yeah. over $20,000, which excludes a lot of purchase activity. <laughs> e or C-I? Yeah. The bid is awarded pursuant to the state price and contract or co cooperative purchasing agreements. The local preference shall not be applicable to bids accepted by the city of Bowling Green that. I, I understand. I, it, I know it is Bowling Green and it's right here. But what I'm saying is when we've had issues in the past, if we were to have something like this, 
and we had those issues in the past where we only had one provider when I just have questions about how we would handle those kinds of things because it was over $20,000. It it was the only provider in our community, and we tried to do that. We ended up having to go outside the region to, to handle it. Mm-hmm. If we had something like this on the books, how would we – I'm just asking the question, just up for debate. Right. We're having this discussion. And I think there would need to be something in here that would give us the ability to uh, take the – the bid that is the best in the best interest of all the taxpayers. Right. And when I go back and I look at, to Jeff's point, when I see that we have spent in the last five years, just as you were speaking, Alan, we have spent almost $1.1 million with local car dealers in the last five years. I mean, there's no way anyone can make the argument in my mind that we're not buying locally. We're not. Absolutely. Yeah. So to Jeff's point, maybe it, it is working. Maybe I just, and again, as they say, just saying. <laughs> and again, last week, the motion was to buy three police cars out of town. And that's the first time, I think, in six months where police cars have come up. I you believe. know, it's amazing. I, 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 this, this city has the most detailed procurement ordinance I have ever seen. I mean, if it's not affecting uh, uh, support for local mergents. I don't know what more you could do short of, excuse me, short of um, uh, something with a local bid preference. On the same token, I've seen cities with very little procurement ordinance that as a policy matter decide, for example, not to buy off state contract just because they want to buy those large purchases locally. So it, it can swing many, many different ways. I'm simply suggesting we can uh, not have to modify our local procurement code and make that decision that we are going to not as a matter of course go right to the state contract which is what what we did this year but we are going to take a bid locally and then retain the right to compare that to state contract and if there's a wide differential we may make the decision to go with the state contract in the best interests of the taxpayers and, but you're, you're not limiting it to those three police cars. You're stating it of everything. We would continue to do that. Correct? Well, yeah. again, I think this whole issue is um, different somewhat because of the existence of that state contract. I mean, it is there, and, and certainly there's, there's every reason to believe because that state contract is competitively procured. I mean, like Richard says, I mean, it's open to hundreds of dealers out there, and I don't know how many participate, but I imagine 15, 20. So I think we can have assurance that the price that is uh, uh, obtained from that competitively is is uh, a good price and serves the interests of the taxpayers in that regard. So, uh, again... Uh, I, I think I, I'm not asking that, though. I, I do understand that that is the good price. I'm just asking, you're not limiting it to just this one purchase. You're saying that we follow that frequently, <sighs> that we would... Look at local prices. Look at local when we're local buying prices. items as expensive as police cars, we are we are competitively procuring them from everywhere. Now, are you talking about the garbage cans that we get for the refuge department and all those things, or what are you talking about? Well, I'm just saying if we're going to look at buying local, that we need to look at buying local for any purchase. We need to we have a need to set it decide it not just be the three cars. It needs to be other things as well. But it doesn't, don't we have, uh, that's in our ordinance already. Yeah, that so we I mean, do that. So, I mean, it's already. So, then that message needs to be out there that we are <laughs> buying local, I mean, which is what we're trying to do, <laughs> as opposed to the, that we're not. Exactly. We are doing that. That is our policy. And I don't think that was clear a couple of Mondays would, ago. Would you like an apology for my no. very hey, statement? No, I that... never apologize to anybody but your wife and kids, man. <laughs> you don't have to apologize to me. <laughs> you know, you don't have to apologize to me. The point is, I'm convinced that we do make very careful purchases. That guy's Mr. Cheapskate over there. You watch the Nichols. I understand that. All I was saying again is in this one time that came, this one motion came across, I said, wait a minute. But it was very well highlighted, that one issue, and that well, put I the perception out there. Uh, well, I turn up. Everybody gets their own spin. All right. Sorry. Okay, are we clear on it now? That <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, Sandra, I, are you, I'm, are you clear? I, I, 
I'm understanding, Jeff, to say that we do have a policy in place and that our local businesses are absolutely given the opportunity to bid and for that we do buy local. Yes. I think we, we know that the product's out there uh, and, and what we need is out there. Why wouldn't we? I mean, if... if so you the, are giving us assurance uh, that we are buying local. And the, and the numbers reflect it. In this well, particular, particularly look at in this in cars. these numbers, in, absolutely, oh, they do reflect it from right. that one. Well, bear in on mind, that, one issue. that big number is heavily influenced because there was a year or two when we purposely decided not to buy off state contract. Let's let's be Going. totally upfront about that, and that's what we want to be. Yeah. So we have totally. done that in the past. Right. Yeah. Transparent. All right. All right. Meetings adjourned. Meetings adjourned. Absolutely. Somehow, maybe you are there.